Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica is one of my all-time favorite anime with some of my favorite characters across all media. When I started binge-watching anything and everything that I could get my hands on when first getting invested in the anime medium, instead of just casually watching an anime here or there, this little gem caught my eye and then quickly blew my mind and then some. This Magical Girl series that you start off thinking it'll be pretty straightforward to then within a few episodes shatters all expectations you once had. To then get more bizarre with each passing episode playing around with time and space to leave off on an ending that utterly shattered and impressed me. That even countless rewatches and years later I still look fondly at this little show. Hell, they wrapped up the story so elegantly, then carried on with a sequel movie which made me love the series even more which I first thought impossible to do with how much I really praise the show from the TV anime and where it left off. There's countless aspects to the show that makes me hold it in such high regards, from individual characters, themes, visual presentation, the list can go on. But the main selling point has always been the theme of isolation and loneliness, at least for myself. Like with any Magical Girl series, you have some little critter telling you make a wish and be a magical girl. But Kube, the deviant scene here, comes from a race that's entire purpose is to collect energy by letting humans grow corrupt, as then the natural order in the universe won't destroy itself. As Kube explains it, it takes more energy to start a fire than the fire gives out once it's ignited. In doing so, there will come a point where there isn't enough energy to sustain life in the universe, which is the driving force to its species. It's one of the reasons you'll see it at certain points eat its own body as to not waste energy. What makes Kyubei terrifying isn't that it's evil, it's the emotionless attitude backing it. Kyubei has zero compassion, focusing only on facts, making it a horrifying opponent due to this powerful creature only caring about logic and not how anyone feels. Due to this, Kyubei leads the girls to wish for things that go against the natural world order, which temporarily will give them hope and happiness to then when the universe starts to correct the imbalance, corruption quickly follows and they get lost in darkness and end up dead, giving the little bastard the energy that he desires. For Kube, the hope is to take Madoka, the most promising of all magical girls, and turn her into a powerful witch, to then receive all the energy they need as she is the holy grail of an endless source of the energy they seek. What makes the idea of isolation so tragically beautiful is without realizing it at first, especially if it's your first time viewing, the anime is designed to be lonely from near minute one, from how they frame shots surrounding the characters with so much empty space, warping perspective to feel as if you're disoriented watching these characters, to this strange girl Homura, who seems stone cold and ruthless but strangely seems concerned about Madoka, despite not knowing her. Everything from minute one seems so cold yet also oddly optimistic, something that you'd typically expect for a Magical Girl series, but not one as unnatural as this. But from the character arcs to how the anime goes about exploring the visuals, there's a strange feeling of melancholy without realizing it at first. This is one of those anime that if you rewatch it shortly after completing it, you notice so many clues to what was happening all along, but even if you only complete this show one time, it still leaves a lasting impression. You have Homura, the girl whose entire wish is built on saving Madoka. Her first time around everything was lost and Kyubei roped her in to making a wish that ended up granting her time magic, which forced her to try time and time again. But with each passing month, Monica and the others continues to die. When you witness episode 10 play out and everything comes full circle of how this cheerful girl became so emotionless, it's utterly heartbreaking. Imagining the number of times Homura had to tackle this fate alone, trying to save her only friend, but with each reset they grow farther and farther apart, to the point that, to Monica, she is nothing but a cold transfer student, but for Homura, this is her dearest friend, which absolutely crushes her. For me, any story revolving around time loops where the end goal continues to stay so far from their reach, forcing them to reset, but because of exhaustion, they give up on trying to regain what it is they lost, but just aim to keep the others safe, is some of the cruelest but most impactful pieces of storytelling. Watching this girl who seemed to care for no one but only herself, revealed to be the loneliest girl forced to tackle an endless fate trying to save her dearest friend while taking on a witch too powerful for her, still stands as one of the cruelest and most beautiful character dynamics I 
I've seen in the anime medium, even after all these years in the countless number of anime that I've completed. You have Mommy, my favorite character in this show, who was taken far too soon, but was needed to go out in the way that she did to set the stage for the remainder of the story. Those you love dead around you. You wish to live, and now are forced to fight witches and evil by yourself, with no one to support or love you. All that time fighting evil with nothing but an emotional cat-like figure to be your companion. And then the minute someone promises that they'll stay by your side, you are killed. A story that allowed a girl to live in depression fighting witches, to then the first moment she feels happiness in years since losing everything kills her, highlighting the brutality of this magical girl world they now live in. Despite not receiving that much screen time compared to the rest, she is the entire reason the show transitions from questionable eeriness to full-blown depression, where the viewer feels sick to their stomach wondering what truly this creature's endgame is. Sayaka, a girl whose childhood friend and crush plagued by a broken body, no longer able to play the instrument that he loves, now lost in an endless sea of depression, ends up selling her soul for him, to then having that love unable to be returned to her. Not just because another friend likes him, as she was willing to let Sayaka have the boy, but because prior to this conversation, Sayaka and the rest learned they are no longer human. That when the contract was made with Kyubei, he stripped their souls from their body, and the soul gems they now possess are what they are. Their bodies are just shells to walk around in, and they are zombies by all rights of the definition. You give your life for your love, wanting to see him happy, to then knowing that not only can't you be together, but you're no longer human. And that revelation is so severe it drives you to lose yourself in utter depression, which results in you becoming so corrupt, you become a witch and die. Kyoko, a girl whose father was shunned by the world for revolutionary ideas, made a wish on his behalf so he would be taken seriously. But after enough time, like with all wishes, ended up totally corrupt. He lost himself in rage, knowing no one listened to him due to their own free will, but rather an evil spell did. Kills himself and her family, leaving her alone in the world. Another lost soul, alone and scared, and feeling completely betrayed by the world she is now forced to protect. To even Madoka herself. From episode 1, she views herself as a nobody, with no talents and those she loves and respects keeps getting hurt. At every point she tries to take action into her own hands, the strange transfer soon kills one of Kyubei's bodies or takes the burden for her, leaving her to rot in sorrow, and the moment she can take action, she ends up becoming a god forced to drain the universe of all corruption for all eternity, no longer being able to be by her friends and family as she once did. It's messed up, which makes it so beautiful in a sick and twisted way. The idea of magical girls is lonely. Each of these characters are alone, and everything about this tale is totally twisted. The brilliance is how all this starts because of a wish. Kyubei never lies or has malicious intents from its eyes. It feels no emotions, but only sees the logical outcome, that the short term, sure it will suck for humans, but in the long term, the universe will prosper. Factually, everything makes sense, and these humans get their wishes granted for a short moment of happiness. It asks, will you trade your soul for a wish? Wish. Be a magical girl for life. Thinking that you can change something that was destined to be is corrupt and eventually comes back to bite you in the ass. But like with these characters, you think, well, wishing for someone's health or another's happiness, how can that be wrong? You help others while fighting evil, what could possibly go wrong with that outcome? But Madoka is all about the cost of a wish, almost as if everyone wants the easy way out in life, and when we take it, can't fathom the consequences that come with taking those shortcuts in life. What always has caught my eye is how I never view Madoka Magica as a happy tale, but rather one that's best suited for the word melancholy. But despite this wave of pensive sadness, it makes me strangely happy. Watching this cast suffer, watching some become gods and others devils, bending time and space for others as reality shatter, there's something so mesmerizing about this experience. Where with most magical girl tales that aim to be positive and sparkly, Madoka aimed to be the opposite, while still keeping the soul of the genre alive and well. That even in the darkest of times, the essence of magical girls lives on as seen by the countless loops Homura jumps through to what Madoka sacrifices in the end. But everything surrounding them, from the creature that grants their wish to the past that surrounds him and the consequences that come with the power that goes against the laws of the universe, it's utterly depressing. But rather than just torturing the characters as some kind of fetish porn as you often see with the darker side of the magical girl genre, this is more about a tragic tale that never needed a happier sad ending. But it was always about pondering the question of should you change fate if the opportunity 
opportunity was before you? Could you live with the uncertainties that this butterfly effect could cause by trying to help some but destroying others in the process? Or could you take on that burden for yourself and be satisfied with it? Madoka is a lonely tale with no real right or wrong answer, and every character's actions are justified including my lovable and hateable fuzzball, Kyube. Strip away the emotions that drive us and everything it says makes sense, but because we are human, we always push back against logic and try to let emotions lead us to victory. Which at times, it's our greatest weapon, but at many points, it's also our greatest weakness. And as we see with most characters with a contract, their emotional wish doesn't equal a happy ending more often than not. All the darkness that consumes us, depression, rage, the negative emotions that lead us to commit heinous acts are given a physical form in the way of witches, it makes tackling these demons seem a lot more hopeful. When something eats away at us and we don't have the answer or solution to fix it, but when you see them in the form of a giant beast leading a girl to commit suicide, you think, kill the witch and the negativity is gone. Even though the theme of Madoka is rather depressing, there is enough optimistic elements to make it feel like there could potentially be a better future for the species. As I mentioned, the visuals help sell this isolation from the first episode. Even in the bright and typically one would call cheerful scenes, you will witness the camera pull far away, characters talking surrounded by nothing. Your mind races, thinking, what's going on? Why do I feel unnerved? What's this weird feeling in the pit of my stomach? Every sequence was designed to keep you on the edge of your seat. A character talking, making you confused as if they know more than they should, and like Madoka, you had no idea what was truly going on. An isolated sequence of characters talking, but something feeling unnatural with its warped perspective. The Arts and Crafts Witch World, where your mind thinks, what am I seeing? Is this someone's Arts and Crafts project? This is cute and a little morbid, but of course, nothing to fear as the characters themselves think. But as you start taking this story more seriously, as you witness the suffering the characters experience, these cute little sequences reveal themselves to be more demonic than we first thought. They always were unnerving, but we convince ourselves it's cute because it's just magical girls right? A little creature with an emotionless stare is totally normal because it's not human so it not having reactions shouldn't be off-putting. Then when you learn what it's been doing this entire time, that same stare will haunt your nightmares. That's most areas to this anime, both on the visual and written levels. This can't be too bad to the shattering realization of oh god it's the worst case scenario possible. Madoka has some of my favorite visual production across all of anime. Shaft is my favorite anime studio. From head tilts to well thought out visual directing adding onto the script at hand, put into another director or team's hands, and the impact to this Twisted Magical Girl series would feel rather plain. Madoka may not be the first Magical Girl series that went dark, but there's a reason many still claim it to be one of, if not the best take on the Twisted genre so many know and love from their childhoods. Visually, it takes your breath away, and once you learn more about the story being told and what certain characters are up to, the visuals click even more. And not only do the past sequences remain eye-catching, they also had been enhancing this dreadful story at hand without us realizing. The unnatural world they fight in, feeling as if the girls are in someone's arts and crafts imagination as something you typically would view as cute, then becomes demonic in what children would see in their nightmares. Without the continuously evolving style of witches they fight in the worlds they visit, the impact of these battles wouldn't be nearly as memorable. And even after so many years of you watching this show, you'll still remember how these action sequences looked like as it's some of the most unique and gorgeous art across all of anime. But then when you see how each of the central girls are explored, rather than me assuming this is an author trying to say why watch how they suffer, it feels as if we're witnessing the worst human life has to offer us. And even when they meet tragic ends, in the back of my mind I feel as if saying don't take shortcuts, tackle the bullshit head on, rather than cutting corners. It may be harder, but you'll succeed in the end. To me this lonely tale can be summed down to as Magical Girls Gone Dark, where from the overarching story to central character themes and motivations are tragically lonely and isolated. But when you see what led them to either their demise or cursed lifestyle, it all started with one simple wish. Something we can't do. Wishes just don't exist. But everyone at some point has thought, what if? It's why so many practice religion, hoping something greater than ourselves can fix the inevitable. Fix our own lives and change something that is meant to be, even if it hurts to omit. To me, Madoka, though maybe sad, is actually more inspiring than anything. When I watch anime, I don't just watch at a surface level. I try my best to break down the many layers that it's built off of, and see what's deep down inside and what was woke up inside me. And every time I leave Madoka, I remember, life can suck the death that surrounds us, the unforeseen events that torment us, the negative emotions that eat away at us. But why wish, pray, or hope for something to change? Change it yourself. And the events we can't change, think about the good you had up to that point. Think about 
about what you can do going forward rather than being lost in an endless sea of what if and hoping for something greater than ourselves to fix the issues at hand. And if by some chance a wish did fall into our laps, think twice before trusting in fairy tales. It's just a story at the end of the day. We never will have magic to make our deepest wishes come true. We always will know that stories like this are just that stories. But it doesn't mean we can't learn from them, and to me that's what makes Madoka so impressive. That depending on my mood, depending on the episode, I witness one of the loneliest, most isolating stories that's in my favorite anime list. Where the cute characters suffer and emotionless huss stares into my soul while speaking the truth. Where people become gods or devils, and happily ever afters just don't exist. But on the other hand, I see a tale teaching us that our lives have many paths that they can take. That shortcuts aren't the answer, and wishing for a solution will get us nowhere. But only our own actions will. Which in result lets this depressing tale become rather optimistic in a strange and sick way. So when a story that runs 12 episodes in a 2 hour length movie has me feeling this wave of emotions, even when I initially watched the TV broadcast with all the production dips that the Blu-ray later had to touch up, and I still feel this strongly even after 7 viewings, I think it's clear why I always return to Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica, as it's simply phenomenal both on the character and production level. Now this of course is just my experience with Madoka Magica, possibly you have an even stronger connection to this wonderful show than myself, possibly you see something that maybe I don't in it, or maybe you despise it for one reason or another. Whatever you feel about this video or series in question, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in that comment section below. If you did enjoy my ramblings, be sure to drop a like to show your support and hit that subscribe button if you haven't been new around here. Now there's also my Patreon for those who want to go the extra mile and help support what I do around here even more, that is if you so wish. So until next time everyone, please take care, don't make magic contracts and have a good one.